It's Vikings game plan, and the Draft King star of the week is this guy, Stefan Diggs. Alrighty, winning formula time, WabiVikings.com, Ron Johnson, Vikings Game Day Live on Fox 9, little old Paul Allen. We debate Vikings and NFL related topics and we begin here. Is this the game? We thought it was last game, we thought he was in, but then Mr. Morelli said no and CJ Ham got the touchdown. Is this the week? Dalvin Cook scores his first National Football League touchdown. I'm gonna go with no. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think CJ right. Ham might get his second on his second touch, which is going to, I think, like Klein Saucer has that record or something. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, CJ Ham is going to be the guy to go line. Dalvin Cook hopefully doesn't trip up, but I just don't feel like there's a third game. Ezekiel Elliott in his third NFL game did not score a touchdown as well. So I'm going to put him in that elite category. I don't think he's going to get it. What a fantasy football wet blanket. Two touchdowns for CJ Ham, zero for Dalvin Cook. Put me on the yes. This is a big Florida you State game. It. Xavier Rhodes, Jameis Winston, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin's going to show up and score, and it's going to be a long one, too. He's got runs of 25, 32, 33, 33 yards. He's going to score from long distance, and it's going to ignite the crowd. Tripped up at the one. Right, no doubt. <laughs> uh, now the Minnesota Vikings offensive line, last time it was home, spectacular against the New Orleans Saints. Then we went to Pittsburgh, might have regressed a little bit. So the question is, which Vikings offensive line performs today against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, we were going to put him in the Hall of Fame after week one, and now in week two we want a new offensive line. So I think we're somewhere in the middle. That's probably where the truth lies. I like us at home. I think this defensive front is pretty good, but I think you're going to see the week one version of the offensive line show up against Tampa Bay. Way to have a lot of conviction. What do you have? The way I love to disagree with Wabi, but I'm kind of leaning towards the Wabi take there. But I'm going to go with it. I know on Twitter, that's three Ron Johnson on Twitter, by the way. On Twitter, everybody was saying that the offensive line looked like they were running screens constantly, but if you actually watch the film, Case Keenan was a little too deep in some of his drops. Whoa. He bailed out a little too soon, which changes the angles in which the offensive line thinks they have to block. So I think coming back home, no matter who the quarterback is, that should all be worked out, and we're going to see a little bit more of the week one offensive line. Dalvin Cook was five and change per carry against the Steelers, which tells me that the run blocking was pretty good and that they should stick with it against these Buccaneers. Who has been our best defensive player to this point? Everson Griffin. Right. Three sacks in two games, came close to a couple of more in both games. The spin move on the left tackle last week, nice. yes please. And if you start compensating for him and throwing protection his way, we got this guy named Daniil Hunter that can rip off 12 and a half sacks in a season. I think Everson has been pacing this defensive effort. I agree with that, but I also agree with the fact that Xavier Rhodes has not allowed a receiver to get loose yet. And Everson can get home because nobody's open. Tonio Brown kind of shut down. Other guys he made some catches on, but when him and Xavier were face to face, nothing happened. And then if you look at uh, the big guy over with the Saints, Michael uh, Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas. Nothing. We didn't see any of the Drew Brees magic that we thought was going to happen. So Xavier Rose, to me, right now is the unsung hero. No 99-yard interceptions for touchdowns yet, but they're coming. Quick aside, do we like the Buccaneers helmet, yes yeah. or no? No, it's awesome. Don't you think it's awesome? I, I think it's super cool. It's Although, too big. The yeah, the logo is too big. I like everything else. The logo's too big. Shrink yeah. it down a little yeah. bit. And you'll be good. I hear this helmet on Twitter is at three Ron Johnson. It is. Uh, finally, let's go league wide to close winning formula through two games. Biggest surprise, disappointment around the NFL. What do you guys think? Let's go, Ronald. Well, my disappointment is celebrations, but my surprise. Mm -hmm. The Detroit Lions Ugh. are leading the NFC North uh, at 2-0. No. So that's that's a big surprise. I mean, the, granted, the team they went against lost some players, David Johnson with the Cardinals, and then you go up against a Giants team that has nobody really. Odell is on one leg, so yeah. 
Lions Vikings showdown in two weeks, by the way, at Can't US wait. Bank Stadium. Totally so we have a chance to bring them back to the pack a little bit. Okay. Let's go with the Denver Broncos as a pleasant surprise. Love it. Starting 2 0. Pretty good rushing offense, but Trevor Simeon lighting the world on fire. Had yep. three touchdowns before halftime last week. No one saw that coming. Yeah. And the defense is still really good. They did lose their defensive coordinator, Wade Phillips, but the defense still looks really good. They took a pick six back to the house last week, so I really like how that team looks out west. Uh, you mentioned you're disappointed in the celebrations yeah. through the first two weeks of the NFL. Why don't you show us, if you scored a touchdown in the NFL, what your celebration would look like? Here we go. I'd Ron have Johnson. teammates around me, though, but I, you know, spin it a little bit, yeah. then you hit them folks, you merely rock on it or something. But they got to celebrate together. Shooting dice, I need Wabi to pick the money up. Come on, guys, <laughs> get it together. Perfect way to finish Vikings game plan. On behalf of the Vikings Entertainment Network, I'm Paul Allen. Thanks for watching.